So a long time ago, we did a video about buffs. What's going on everybody? Evan here from Evan's Detail and Polishing. So back in the day when I was shooting all my videos on GoPros, uh, we did a video on buffs. Um, recently, I've had a bunch of people go back and check that video out. And a lot of people told me the audio sucked and they couldn't hear me and the video sucked, it wasn't great. So here we are, I'll redo it. I'll try to explain as best I can about buffs, uh, the fabric, the thicknesses, um, and the number of packs. So let's get in it. So this buff here, was an example buff. Um, it's got a bunch of different colors. It's not really useful for anything other than cool display. Um, we also had a red, white, and blue buff for a little while. Um, but most of these multicolored ones are, for me, display. Um, now there are companies that sell them like Quick Cuts and stuff like that. Um, those ones will have use. Um, I don't personally use them, um, but I do know a lot of people that do and a lot of people that get great results with them. So. Um, I'll kind of walk through those a little bit. But to start it off, I'm going to start off with the white buffs. So white buffs come in all different shapes, sizes, styles. Um, this one here is the most popular one that we use. It's a 40 ply with just a single stitch in the center. Uh, we run these on our variables at 1800, 2200 RPM, never over 2400 RPM. Um, these ones are also the airway style. Some people like these a little better. I like the 40 ply because they're really thick and they fluff out. But some people like the skin, the skinny, thin ones, the 20 plies. So these are a 20 ply. Uh, these are both Dome flannel. They're both the exact same thing. Just so you can see how much thicker this one is than this one. Um, they also have untreated white. Um, the untreated white looks a lot like this fabric here. Um, and it's just an airway style with um, no starch, no color dye to change it. Um, it's a little more aggressive than the flannels in my opinion, but um, some people have really good luck with these. Now you can also get these flannels and the untreated white in full sewn. Now you've probably seen some of these in truck stops, they'll have sewn stitching all the way around and they're really tight knit. Um, there's a lot of polishers that polish with those and get great results as well. Once again, I don't use those, that's older technology for me and uh, I like the airway buffs myself. Um, except for this 40 ply. The 40 ply is the only sewn buff we use here in our shop. I shouldn't say the only one. We do use uh, a 10 inch uh, 30 ply uh, spiral sewn for when we do air tanks and stuff underneath the trucks. It's the only way to really build up good heat in those tight spaces. Um, so we do use two different types of sewn buffs here in the shop, but this is our main one. Um, so let's get into the airways. So, airways come in multiple different sizes. Um, I've seen everything from six inch all the way up to 26 inch. Um, on grinders, the most popular sizes are eight and 10. Uh, recently, a few years ago, we worked with a company that developed nines, um, and nines seem to be the best size for our seven inch grinders. Like an eight inch is pretty small, uh, this is an 8 inch here. An 8 inch is pretty small. You can see how much meat is on the actual fabric. It's not a lot. Um, but these are the kindest on your grinder. Your grinder doesn't want a giant buff because it requires a ton of torque, builds up a ton of heat, and they just don't like them. They don't like being reefed on like that. They're not built for polishing. They're built for grinding. And uh, most grinding discs are 7 inches or 6 inches. So most seven inch grinders are built for seven inches. These are eight. Now you're also putting um, friction on here from fabric being on metal. Um, nines seem to be the best for us here in the shop because we can get into the areas that we want to be into. Uh, the back walls of 22 fives. Uh, I do know a lot of polishers that go to 10 inch buffs for the back walls of 22 five inch rims. Um, I can get an eight inch in on a 22 five on the back wall. Uh, Zach Cameron, didn't believe me years back. I showed him how to do it on Small's truck uh, when we were out in uh, Tulsa. 
at Shell Rotel. And I showed them that you can use an eight inch buff on the back wall. It's not easy and it's not great, but it can be done. Um, and then you get into the next larger size and that's 10 inch. Um, so this is uh, the difference between an eight, a nine and a 10. Let's see if I can line these up good enough to show you here. So that's the difference between an eight, a nine and a 10. And I've got those pretty well stacked. So you can see just a little difference between eight, nine and 10. There's not a whole lot. It's a half inch on each side. So it gives you that extra inch each step you go up. Um, so it's rather simple, easy to understand. 10 inch will wear your buffers out a lot faster. You'll burn through brushes faster. Um, you'll wear out bearings faster. You'll burn out your grease in the head a lot faster with 10 inch. A lot of those things require a lot more maintenance. So we use nine inch because we don't like replacing our buffers very often. I don't really, really like replacing the parts on the buffers. Um, now, the difference between the plies. So, let me see, I'm gonna have to get in close on this one here, but let me see if I can get you to see this. Let's see if it focuses. All right, so these right here, this is a 16 ply number two pack. This is a 20 ply four pack. Um, actually, I believe this is 18 ply. Let me count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine and nine is 18. This is an 18 ply four pack. So you can see there's only two more plies, but you can see how much thicker this is. They pack in more material in there. So a two pack is real loosely, real loosely put together like this. There's not a whole lot of waves. As soon as you get into the four ply, it gets really thick, really, really thick. So the way I can best explain the thicknesses for myself, and now granted this is all just me in my personal experiences and what makes sense in my head. What makes sense in my head might not make sense to you. But every time you add more plies and more pack, like go from a zero pack to a one pack, two pack, three pack, four pack, as soon as you get into different packs and different thicknesses, each one creates different amounts of heat. So for me, if I use a 16 ply or a 20 ply, both number two packs, which is what we sell on our website, uh, between your orange buffs and your yellow buffs, um, both of those are 16 plies that we sell on our website. Um, they build up a ton of heat. Now 20 ply builds up almost twice as much heat and twice as fast. So if you get into the 20 plies, and you're spinning at 6,000 RPM, a lot of times it builds up too much heat too fast that I notice a lot of people burn stuff. Um, we've tested this theory out in my shop a number of times with the training tanks that we use in these videos, and we've seen this issue a lot. Now, I've tested this with buff manufacturers. Uh, we've had a lot of people through the shop over the years, and everybody has run into that same issue. As soon as you get into 18 and 20 ply on a 6,000 RPM grinder, Yes, it will build up a lot of heat. Yes, it will hold a ton of compound, but it also likes to burn stuff because it gets too hot that you can't maintain it. Now, what I will say is that a 20 ply on a 3500 RPM grinder works really, really well because it builds up a ton of heat. So a lot of polishers that I know that run variable speed grinders and actually like running them on a regular basis, a lot of those guys will either step up to a stiffer buff to create that heat or they'll go with a buff with more plies and a tighter pack. Um, as soon as you get up to 20 ply four pack, most companies won't even make you a 20 ply four pack because it's so tight um, and so thick, the clinch rings don't like to hold them up. And if you spun that at 6,000 RPM, a 20 ply four pack, it would likely, likely explode. Um, a lot of people that I've seen with buffs explode, it's not pretty. I've seen guys lose fingers. I've seen people hack their arms real bad. I've seen people hit themselves in the face. I know a couple polishers that even died from terrible, terrible injuries. Um, it happens. Like it, this is a very risky business. As soon as you're running 6,000 RPM, the risk is there. Like bad things can happen, and it can happen in a hurry. Um, but back to the buffs. Now the different colors. If you've watched some of my previous videos, um, you know I run just straight colors: straight orange, straight yellow, um, straight purple, straight green, straight pink, straight red. I don't use mixed colors. Um, a lot of people do sell these fast cuts. They're yellow mixed with orange or orange mixed with yellow, however you want to look at it. 
These are very readily accessible in your truck stops. Um, I don't sell any of them here currently. Um, I don't have any intentions of selling these anytime soon. Um, to me, I look at them, whether this is right or wrong, right or indifferent, um, I look at my buffs in sheets of sandpaper. Now, most fabrics are relatively the same. Most buffs are made with 8680 fabric, which means there's 86 strings going this way and 80 going this way. They lay over each other in a fabric pattern. Of course, it's fabric. And most buffs are made out of that 8680 material. Most of them that you find in truck stops, most of them that you find on my website are all 8680 material. Now, they make them that way because they hold, they hold compound and they dissipate air and cool off faster so that they don't overheat. Um, as soon as you get into like a 60-60 fabric, which is more aggressive, it's 60 grains this way and 60 grains this way. There's kind of a looser weave. You can kind of see air through there. You can see me. That stuff gets a little more aggressive. Now your aggressive buffs, like your purple, this one's a 60-60. So this one here is going to build up twice as much heat as this one here. Why? Because the 60-60 fabric, the compound's going to mash in there and it's really going to grind on it hard. So color doesn't really matter between manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, oranges and yellows are relatively the same amongst most manufacturers. Um, there's usually a 5 to 15% difference in stiffness between orange and yellow. So if I'm looking at these in sandpaper reference, I would say orange is more like a 400 grit, where yellow is more like a 600 grit. If I rub four and 600 grit together, what grit am I gonna get? I'll let you think about that for a second. The answer is you're still gonna see the 400. Even though the 600 is there and doing its job, 400 is always more aggressive. So as soon as you wipe across somewhere where the six has been, the 400 is gonna show. You're always gonna see the more aggressive grit. So for me, if I'm gonna use an orange and a yellow, the yellow will hold compound longer, which is why I'm guessing fast cuts were ever designed was so that you could hold compound in a stiffer buff longer. But for me, I'd rather just use a stiffer buff, like an orange buff, and get an orange buff finish, or a yellow, and get a yellow buff finish. So for me, I like to just keep them solid color so that I know what I'm going to get for a finish. Now these fast cuts, I don't use them. Um, orange and yellow split, do they work? Yes. Back in the day, I used a lot of them. Um, I grew out of them. Um, I switched to just straight color buffs, and that's all there was to it. So for most people and most manufacturers, colors vary. Like I said, orange and yellow is probably the most common one, um, but other colors like greens, purples, there's so many variations in greens and purples. Like this one's a green, there's also, I don't have another one out here, but there's other styles of green. And even though this green and that green look the same, sometimes they aren't. It's the starch and the stiffness or the treatment that they put in them that make them different. I could take an orange buff and not put any treatment in it and it could be as soft as a yellow buff or softer if that's the treatment you put in it. Now you could take a yellow buff and put a clear dip or a lot of starch in it and make this yellow super, super stiff. So if I take a yellow buff and make it super stiff and I switch to another company and I'm buying from another company and I order a yellow from them and it comes in really super soft, well, that's on me. Like that company just segregated themselves from everybody else and wanted their colors to be unique to them. So you're not necessarily ordering the color as much as you're ordering the stiffness you're desiring. So always make sure that you're paying attention to who you're buying from or where you're buying from. Um, most people are buying from truck stops, so truck stop standards are reds and purples are stiff, oranges and yellows are your cutting and coloring, and then your whites are your soft buffs. Um, but I have one here. This gray is super, super stiff but I also have a light blue one here that's really super soft. This one doesn't, doesn't do hardly anything. I can bend it clear over and there wasn't hardly any treatment in it at all. 
So it's just the lack of starch that's in there. Now, once you get into your bigger buffs, it's all the same thing. It doesn't matter. The size is all just a personal preference thing on your part. So whether you want an eight inch, a nine inch, or a 10 inch, or if you've got machines, if you want 12 inch, 14 inch, up all the way up to 26 inch, that size is your personal preference. There's guys in Canada that are running 12 inch buffs on their buffers. How they're keeping their buffers alive, I have no idea. I just know that they're doing it. Um, dip treat. The difference between a dip treat and a mill treat. Mill treat is just starch that makes it stiff, the amount of starch. Um, these dip treated buffs, as you can see, I cannot bend this very easily. Ugh, there. That's going to stay like that until I mash it back flat again. Dip treat is simply that. They take a buff and dip it. Um, if you're getting your buffs out of California, they're water, uh, water dipped. If you're buying them in some truck stops or if you're buying them from some manufacturers outside of California, you could get anything from water dipped to solvent dipped. Um, the ones we sell are chemical dipped or solvent dipped and I find they hold up a lot better. Um, state of California thinks they can cause cancer, but I don't know. I'm not a doctor by any sense of the term. So I know they only use water out there. Um, but these ones here are one of my favorites for heavy, heavy cutting and heavy lifting. Uh, this is a 10 inch red, uh, red dip over a white material. Uh, I don't know, let me bring this in close here and see if you can see this. So that right there, uh, right there, you can see it's white fabric and it's a red dip. You can see on the ring there, clinch ring. It's a red dip. So this one's super stiff. Whereas this red here, our old hot steppers, this red is just steamed and pressed and it's no dip. Usually you can tell by the clinch ring, you can see them when they're dipped, the color lands on the clinch ring. Um, when they're water dipped, the clinch rings are usually really rusty. Um, they, don't, they don't hold up as well, whereas the clear dip or colored dips on the solvent or chemical covers the clinch ring every time, where the water-based ones usually doesn't. Um, now dip treats will build up a ton more heat as well. Um, dip treats are very, very aggressive. Um, we joked around one time that this could polish a floor. It actually did polish a spot on our floor. Um, it, it, it cuts that hard. So on old nasty trailer rails and stuff like that, like reefer trailer rails, we will use this. Um, can use it also on um, wheels that are really rough where you want to be more aggressive and cut deeper. These will work as well. Um, so do these. The regular red airways work really well. Um, we mainly use the dip treats on our stainless. Um, so anytime we've sanded stainless, if you watched our stainless video, you've seen that our dip treat buff um, is sometimes our go-to for our first cut stage. And even if we don't sand, this will cut really deep. Um, builds up a ton of heat and cuts really fast and that's what stainless wants. Um, it's also really tough to get compound to hold in the dip treat buffs. Um, dip treat buffs, you usually gotta rake the edge and get it broken in a little bit. Um, to get the compound to stick because the compound just doesn't want to stick at all in a dip treat buff. If you just took this buff right here and mounted it on a grinder and just started hogging compound onto it, it would just spray off every direction. And if you stopped it, there wouldn't be a whole lot stuck to it. You have to rake these out real good to get it to stick. Now your standard airways, these ones come in all different shapes and sizes. Most of everything we sell here on our website is 16 ply number two packs. Uh, it's the most universal buff that you see selling in most retail shops. It's the most user-friendly buff of all of them. Um, I don't recommend getting into 18 or 20 ply. I don't recommend getting into four packs unless you're an advanced user. And even then, I don't personally use them a whole lot either. I've got a very good pattern that I use and I can f compensate um, over buffing something if I need to to build up more heat. I know patterns to bring heat back in. Um, if you watch the previous video on back cutting and stuff like that, you will see how to build up extra heat and how to lay compound down so that you can use buffs like this, the dip treat. 
Um, so I really recommend not changing your packs. Um, sticking with a 16 ply, um, most people don't mess things up with a 16 ply. You, most people just miss spots when it's 16 ply. Um, so I recommend these ones right here. Um, the orange and the yellow, as you guys know, is part of my two-step kit, and that's the hev most heavily used one that I use. Um, but that's pretty much where I'm at. This one here, eight ply hot stepper, for Peterbilt steps only. Everybody wants to know, what do we use the hot stepper for? Can we use it on diamond plate? Use it on diamond plate, it's gonna tear up super fast. Only use the skinnier buffs for areas where you need to get in really tight. Now this would work really well on like uh, motorcycle jugs where you gotta get in the, the air fins to cool it down. This works really well for that. Um, but this also works super good for the Peterbilt step treads. So on Peterbilt step treads, you got that one little area where it's super tight in the middle. These eight plies get down in there and buff in that little section. Now these eight plies, we do spin them at 6,000 RPM. Just watch out, when you're in there, if one lets loose, let it go and walk away because it's gonna blow apart. But I hope you guys find this video useful. Um, like I said, we did this one a long time ago. Sorry for the poor audio quality. Sorry for the poor um, video skills. Um, I didn't know what I was doing back then. Hell, I still don't know what I'm doing now. Appreciate you guys for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys find this video useful. Like, subscribe, comment below, share to your friends, let them know it's there. And uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.